how to use ChatGPT study mode. Hello everyone and welcome back. Now if you're someone that is trying to go through exam season and you need something that can help you study and you don't need the distractions from your friends then ChatGPT has now launched its study mode which is something that is truly innovative that is going to help you learn and ace your exams. So let's jump right in and take a look at study mode. Starting off you're going to log on to your ChatGPT account and then you're going to click on the plus icon over here. Once you click on the plus icon, you will see a drop down menu. Within this drop down menu, you're going to see study and learn. Now, this is a specific study mode that ChatGPT has created and it has three default prompts that you can get started with. So if you want help with your homework, if you wanted to explain a topic to you, or if you want to create a practice quiz. So I want to create a practice quiz and then it's going to ask me what level and what subject this should be. So this should be a university level psychology related quiz and then it's going to proceed with building our quiz starting off it's going to ask me a few more questions uh, about what I'm focusing on so let's say I want to go with research methods and statistics and just like so I'm going to type that in and now it's going to proceed with creating my quiz so which of the following best describes the difference between an IV and a DV and now I have to answer now let's say I am just going to select C which I know is the incorrect option. Nice try but not quite. Now it's actually going to explain to me what the answer actually is. So the IV is what you change and the DV is what you measure. So this is cause and effect. And then so this choice fits that definition. Starting off question number two coming up, are you ready? And so on and so forth. I can proceed with having a quiz on any topic. Now study mode is not just going to be something that is only limited to creating a quiz, but it can help you with your homework and explain topics to you. So let's say today I want to tell me all the basics about math and now it's going to proceed with asking me about math. I am going to add math and then after that what level are you in and I am going to say let's say it's high school and then after that it is going to show me a few of the core areas of maths including algebra, arithmetic as well as geometry, statistics and I want high school stats. Now, core topics, types of data, measures of central tendency, measures of speed, probability basics, and displaying charts. So what kind of data is each one of these? And now it's asking me a few questions so it can analyze what level of teaching it needs to be doing because it needs to build some information about how much you already know. Now this is if we get started with asking it questions and asking it to explain topics to us. If I go into study mode directly and ask it to help me with some homework. It's going to ask me what type of homework it is. It's not going to give me the exact answers, but it's going to show me the steps that I need to take to solve it myself. So I need to, what subject is this for? So this is for research methods research methods and the question is to build a research scenario or a quantitative research. And after that, I have not started off with this particular homework. Pick the general topic that you care about. Let's say it's going to be online shopping that I want to get started with. And then it's going to proceed with asking me a few more questions, including what variables that I want to use, as well as how I want to further develop my study. And then it's going to show me how I can develop my study step by step. Now, the reason why this is so useful and helpful is that it's not going to give you the entire answer in one thing. If I went ahead and asked it to build a research scenario, for quantitative research within the regular mode of ChatGPT, it would have built the entire thing on its own. It wouldn't have asked me a question at all because this is a very direct query that it can simply answer and build the entire thing for me, but it's not going to do that in study mode. Now within study mode, there are a lot more things you can do. Let's say I have a complex math mathematical question and I cannot seem to find the answers and break it down. So I can ask it to break down the step-by-step -step solution of that as well. So I just wanted to pick yourself and I'm just going to let it pick the general variables that it's going to study. Building the research scenario. I'll start it after you fill the blanks after we read it together. A researcher is interested in this. They survey 100 university students aged this to this. How many hours they typically spend on online shopping and how much money they spend. The research will use correlational analysis. So on and so forth. It's going to build upon my study and give me the exact steps that I need to take to build this 
the study and how I'm going to be analyzing it, the tools, the methods, all of that is being taught to me or at least it is going to be giving the answers in the form of a question and answer basis rather than just giving you the entire thing. Now, if I was to ask this entire thing with the simple version of ChatGPT, which I'm going to do in a regular chat, you will see that it's going to build a complete research scenario. And you guys can see the research problem, objective, questions, and just like so it's building the entire research scenario, the hypotheses, the method as well, the variables data analysis, just like so. So you guys can see that study mode truly is something that is very different. And within study mode, if I want to build a quiz based upon some PDFs or some books that I have from my own institution, I can ask it to go on ahead and use those as references as well. If I click on add photos and files and I add PDFs of my own books, I can ask it to build questions and build quizzes and teach me accordingly to those books, which makes it really easy for you to skim through your books to be able to gather information from those books or PDFs that often get neglected when you get a large amount of you know coursework because you do not want to have to read everything and you don't know where to get started from how to interrelate the topics together so instead just click on add files and then click on add photos and files once you do that you have the ability to upload your pdfs your books your photos and then you're able to extract relevant information and you can have chat gpt teach you everything that is present within your book which is going to simplify your work a whole lot more now you might wonder hey is this study mode going to actually help me in learning something new? So if I ask it to teach me something I don't know related to psychology and just like so based upon the conversations that we've had it's going to ask me something so quick question have you studied family psychology I've studied it formally and then after that it's going to go beyond the basics so the brain can stimulate others using your own neural circuits, mirror neuron systems, mirror neurons. They're brain cells that activate not just when you perform an action, but also when you watch someone else perform it. So if you see someone reaching for a cup, your brain fires it as if you were reaching, even if you're sitting still. Mirror neurons may be a neural foundation for empathy, imitation, language learning, and even some types of mental illnesses. Understanding intentions, empathy and emotion, learning by imitation, and then applications. So autism spectrum disorder, trouble with empathy, reading others, as well as imitation, and possible psychopathy is related to mirror neurons. So quick check-in. Have you come across this before? If yes, want to go deeper? If not, you want to try a little thought experiment to feel your mirror neurons in action. So I want to go with the thought experiment, and I'm just going to add that over here, and I want to try a little thought experiment. Close your eyes for a moment, and then picture this. What just happened? Something is slicing a juicy lemon with a knife as they cut it a bit of sour juice squirts out and then they pick up the wedge and slowly bite into it you can see their face squint as the sourness hits you know the taste the feeling the reaction can you feel a slight tingle in your own jaw or puckering in your mouth so just like so it is now demonstrating the thing that it explained to me and this can help you in realizing information that you're studying now ChatGPT has the free version but if you do want to upgrade you can upgrade for only $20 on their plus plan which gives you limited access to Sora as well as access to all of their newer agents and multiple reasoning models as well. I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe.